Why hello YouTubers, I have a good video for you today. Today we're going to read a stock price from the internet, Yahoo Finance perhaps, and then we're going to put it into a Java program and then from there you can use the stock price to do whatever you like. Now just to give you an idea of something I've done with this, and this took me a little while to do, but essentially I have a list of stocks up here, then it goes out to the internet, pulls all of their prices, so right now it's going through the internet, scanning all these, scanning, and you can see which one we're scanning here. Right now it just did Duke Energy, then FRT, GAS, and we're going to keep going down through. But essentially you can write a program so that it pulls any piece of information about the stock you want, and then we can throw it into an array or into a list, and then it will give you a nice little printout. Uh, you can even go as far as say, well, let's get the P-E ratio for a stock and then let's put it into a text file so that I can look at it later. And then uh, maybe a year goes by and then you want to graph the P-E ratios for a specific, uh, specific stock. And you certainly could do that. Now, a lot of this data is publicly available, so you don't have to record everything. But it is very nice to go ahead, pull everything uh, for several stocks, organize it by PE ratio or maybe by dividend yield and it'll give you a nice printout here in Java. So just as an example, here's my stock list sorted by PE ratio and as long as one has been provided for us, they're now sorted from lowest PE ratio to highest PE ratio. Here's Time Warner Cable, PE ratio of 17.49 and then they just the PEs just get higher as we go down. But okay, so how did I do that? We're going to work with a simple example, and all we're going to do is just read the stock price of Coca-Cola. So that is our goal right now. We just want it to be able to run the program, and then in our console at the bottom, it'll print out whatever Coca-Cola's stock price is. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing that we'll do is let's just create a final string for the Coca-Cola symbol, which is just KO. So final string, we'll call it sim is equal to KO. Now, before I get too far, notice that I already have my imports up here. So as I'm going to go along here, my imports are ready to go. You'll have to add these as you go along. And I also have a throws IO exception. This is just so I don't have to add uh, try and catches in here to clutter up my code. Uh, it's probably a better practice than to do this, but I'm just doing it for demo purposes right now. Next thing that we're going to do is a URL object. So say URL, URL equals new URL. And at this point, we need the URL of where we're going to read the stock price from. And I have done it from Yahoo, but I think it is actually easier to do it from Google Finance. So I'm going to go to Google Finance, and I'm just going to grab this URL. If you just type in Google Finance, and then search KO for Coca-Cola, it'll get you here. So copy this, paste it in. Now we have our URL. Let's keep going. Next thing we'll do is uh, create a URL connection. So just like we have a URL object, we'll have a URL connection object. And now we aren't going to do a normal instantiation here. Here we're going to open it off the URL we just created. So now it'll be URL.openConnection. And let's keep going here. Our initial setup's almost done already. Uh, next thing we need is an input stream reader. So input stream reader in stream or call it whatever you like equals new input stream reader. Now in here we're going to throw in that URL connection we just made. So URL connection and now we're going to use the method get input stream. Now, off of that, we're going to create a buffered reader. So, a buffered reader, call mine buff equals new buffered reader. And now, as a parameter in here, we'll put that in stream that we just created. Okay, so now what have we done? Well, I'm going to show you uh, through more code. So. First, let's just create a string line, and now we're going to use that buffered reader to read a line. And now let's create a loop. So while line is not equal to null, equal to null. And so let's just print out our line. 
just so we can see what's going on here and then we're going to read in another line with the buffer reader. So until the line is null, we're just going to keep going through and we'll we're going to keep looping and we'll say read the line, print it out, read the line, print it out, read the line, print it out. We're going to do this over and over. So let's go ahead and run this. Okay, let's see what this gave us. This gave us a lot more code in a different language. So now we have code in HTML. This is the HTML code for that specific Google Finance page for Coca-Cola. So now the next thing that we need to do is that the stock price is buried in this somewhere, and this is the tricky part. Now we just need to figure out how to get the stock price out uh, so that we can throw it in a variable and then just print it out. But okay, so what's our strategy going to be to get the stock price out of this mess? Well, I'll tell you that I'm about to do the hard part for you. So let's just copy this. We'll throw it in Microsoft Word so we can search it here quick. Change the color to red. Now, the easiest way I've found to do this is search for the name or the symbol of the stock rather, surrounded by quotes, with a square bracket in front. Now look at what we found. Buried in this HTML, there is a square bracket with the symbol, and then immediately after comes the name of the company, and then the price that we're after, so 42.90, which is the current price of that stock. So if we can find this, then we can work our way to that decimal point and then ultimately get what we're after, which is the price. Okay, I'm going to go ahead now and delete everything else. We'll keep this line just because this is what we're going to focus in on. Delete everything else, keep that guy just so we can reference it in case we need to. So again, this will be the value that we're searching for. Square bracket, KO, uh, surrounded in quotes. Okay, so now let's search for that in code. Now, to search for that, as you can probably imagine, we're just going to add an if statement. So inside of our while loop, we'll say if line.contains that value that we're searching for, and we said it was going to be square bracket quotes. Now, remember your escape sequences here. It has to be backslash quote, then KO for the symbol, then another quote, so backslash quote, and then a comma. So that's what we're searching for. So if it contains that, then we'll go ahead and print out this line. Now let's run. And there we go. So we have one line now that contains what we're searching for. So let's keep going. Now we need to uh, be more specific and get it down to where we're searching for the decimal point. So now we found the line containing this, but now we need to get it to the point where we find the index of this decimal point. Once we find the index of this decimal point, then it's easy. We take two before, two after, and then we have our number. Okay, so finding the decimal point. First, let's get rid of this print line. And we're going to be writing inside of this if. So the first thing we're going to do is just find the index of that KO that we just searched for. So let's actually record that index into a variable. So we'll say, we'll just call it target and line dot index of and that same thing we searched for before we'll just throw it in here so we can get the index of that all right that gives us the index of the ko now let's use that to find the index of the decimal so now we can say in deci same thing line dot index of now we're going to search for the decimal and we're going to use the method that provides a starting parameter. So we'll say search for the decimal starting at the target index that we just found. So once we have this, looking at this in Word, we're saying start here and search for the next decimal. Well, the next decimal will get us to here. So now we'll have that index and now from this point, there's several ways that you could get the actual number. I'm going to now use a loop and we'll say uh, int start is equal to deci, so the location of the decimal. And then I'm going to say while line.careat starts is not equal to a 
quote character quote and then we'll just have a start minus minus so by doing this I'm going to keep backing up my start index here until it's not going uh, well until it is a quote because if we go back to our word doc we see that in here uh, the price is surrounded by a quote so if we keep backing up until we hit this quote well one more than that gives us the start of our number once we have that now let's go ahead and actually record our price into a variable so let's just create a string for it called string price and I'm going to put not found in here just so in case we don't actually find it it'll print that uh, print that out at the end here for us so right under our while loop we can now say price is equal to we'll just use the substring method it'll be start plus one since start is the index of that left quote and now it'll be deci plus three because that'll put us one uh, one stopping point beyond that hundredths place and that's where we want to be it won't include anything beyond the hundredths place but it'll uh, include the hundredths place for us sub the string okay so now let's go ahead and run and if everything works out correctly our price should print out down in our console So here's our console, 4265. Let's just verify with Google. There it is, 4260, well, 66 now. And there's 67. We should actually be able to run this again, and it should match what's on Google. There we go, 4267. So as the price changes throughout the day, and if you keep running, it will uh, match whatever is currently on the website. So I hope you enjoyed this. Use it to do something creative. Good luck.